just wanna, I just wanna, I just wanna candy i've got an everlasting candy i've got an everlasting chance for me to say with an everlasting candy it'll last all day hey you think i can have some of that everlasting candy nope it's all mine forever <laughs> Mm. Well, I'm gonna just gum. Okay. <laughs> oh. Yes, I am. And today we're brought to you by the number 12. Like 12 drummers drumming. Or 12 pixie sticks. Or 12 cats stuck in a tree. <laughs> but our favorite 12 is a 12 year old robotics champion. Please welcome someone who knows no, stuff. stuff. Come on in. It's so good to see you again. Thanks. I'm so excited to be here. Okay, for those who may have missed you last time, tell us who you are and what you know. My name's Mishka, and I am now a 19-time robotics champion and a maker slash inventor. Oh, inventor? Oh, I didn't know you invented things. Oh, yeah. That's actually how I got into robotics. I was trying to build a machine to take out the trash. That's my chore at home. Oh. But it ended up just chunking trash around the house. So my mom thought putting me in robotics club after school was a better use of my time. Was it? Oh, yeah. I've invented and built all kinds of things. Like, like what? what? Like an automatic dog bowl. It feeds your dog while you're away. Oh, that's awesome. I also invented a toothbrush that brushes your teeth while you sleep. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I. You know, the only thing I've ever invented is a sandwich. It's called the stomach nuke. I wouldn't recommend eating it. But I've always wanted to build something that really mattered, you know? Something that could help the world. And now I have. What, what is, is it? it? 
I call it the static charge transducer. Wow! What, what does it do? Einstein, Bose, Newton, Curry, MacGyver. No, no, she says the names of physicists when she's feeling impatient. Right, oh, sorry, did we, did we say something wrong? No, you're fine. I just thought this invention was obvious, but obviously not. <laughs> the static charge transducer collects static electricity and stores into a battery. Then it expels the electricity into an actual electrical voltage that can just about power anything. Einstein, Bose, Newton, Curry, MacGyver. It means that instead of wind power, hydropower, or even solar power, the static charge transducer can create electricity just about anywhere. All you need is a static charge. Oh. You still don't understand, do you? No. Want a demonstration? Yes. Why don't we make it a little competition? It's time to play how many so-and-so hosts does it take to turn on a light bulb? What are we doing? You are both covered in wool blankets, which are wonderful conductors. When I say go, you both will jump around, therefore brushing the wool, causing a static charge to pass through the transducer, then into the light bulb. The first person to light up your light bulb with nothing but static electricity wins. Got it? Uh, is this safe? On your mark, oh. get set, go! Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. Oh, look at that! Look at that! Got it! Oh! Ow! Oh, oh come on. Ow! Oh, that hurts. Come on! No, no, no! You did it, Brandon! I did. You created a usable electricity from static! And John, you... You exercise. Well, I did eat those pixie sticks. Yeah. Hey, this is incredible, Mishka. I mean... You've used your talents, your skills, and your gifts to truly make a difference. Thanks. Yeah, no doubt this transducer is going to change the world. Transducer. Yeah, that too. Hey, whenever you have something else to show us, please bring it on the show. we Will do. See you guys. All right, bye. bye. <sighs> this thing is hot. Yeah. It's Bible Story Time with Kellen. Should I even ask? Oh, science experiment. Ah, makes sense. So Kellen, do you have a Bible story for us? I do. It's about a young person who maybe thought he didn't have a lot to offer, but God created him just like he created all of us to make a huge difference. Just like Mishka. Yep. Oh, I'm also gonna need your help for this story. No, no problem. problem. To the theater. This story begins several years after Jesus had been resurrected and had gone back to heaven. The Apostle Paul was on a long missionary journey and was headed to the town of Lystra, where a young man named Timothy lived. God bless us, everyone. I'm Tiny Tim. I don't think anyone called him Tiny Tim, but I'm going to roll with it. Timothy's mother and grandmother were Jewish and believed in the one true God. But his father, his father was Greek. I'm a Greek. And he probably didn't believe in the same things as Timothy's mother and grandmother. Now you go and run off, work hard, and be a good man. Yes, Papa. Let me see you run. Faster. Faster, my boy. Now do a flip. Whoa. Whoa, that's a perfect 10. <laughs> Very good. Good. Now go, go, go. Go. Oh, he left. Now, when Paul arrived in Lystra, he began teaching people all about Jesus. And he even healed a man in Jesus' name. Now, you would have thought that that would have made people happy. I, Paul, have healed this man in Jesus' name. Jesus came to save us. Oh, that hurt. Oh. Oh, stop it! Ah. But uh. many people didn't trust Paul, so they threw stones at him. No, 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 please, please. Ah. Ah. Stop! Ah. Oh. Get away! That one's going to leave a mark. Ah. 
They thought he was dead, so they dragged him out of the city. But he wasn't dead yet, and he wasn't scared either. He got back up, went right back into the city to teach some more. And Timothy, his mother and grandmother, they listened to Paul's teachings, and all three of them became believers in Jesus. God loved us so much that he sent Jesus. God has blessed us, everyone. When Paul went on his way, he left behind a small, thriving new church. Timothy became a faithful disciple of Jesus, and everyone in the church spoke well of him. So much so that when Paul returned several years later, he wanted Timothy to travel with him on his journey. I want you to travel with me on my journey. Why do you want me to come along? There are others who are older and with more experience. Your mother's Jewish, right? Yes, sir. And your father's Greek? Yes, sir. Well, then you've been raised to know God's law, and you also know how to relate to people who may be from different backgrounds. So you're very special. I am. Then let's go. Yes, walk with me. Over the next few years, Timothy traveled with Paul helping to encourage believers in starting up new churches. Paul even sent Timothy to help lead churches in the cities of Corinth and Ephesus. Paul wrote Timothy a letter with a special mission. Timothy, I have a special mission for you if you choose to accept it. I don't want it. You may not think you want it, but wait until I've finished writing. Okay. I want you to stay in Ephesus. Stay in Ephesus? Yes, Ephesus. But the leaders in Ephesus are so much older than me. Read this very carefully. Uh, hold on. Mm -hmm. Okay. Don't let anyone look down upon you because you are young. Set an example for the believers in what you say and in how you live. And also set an example in how you love and in what you believe. Show the believers how to be pure. Use the gift the Holy Spirit gave you. What an amazing letter. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, oh. I'll do it! Who what are you waiting for? Go, go, oh, my son! Oh. <laughs> Look at him run. I love to watch him run. Go! Do great things! Even though Timothy may have been young when he met Paul, that didn't stop him from helping to build the early church and making a huge difference in telling the incredible news of Jesus. The end. Timothy was the perfect person to help Paul plant churches. With his gifts and his background, he fit right in. Yep. Timothy discovered who he was meant to be, and then he made all the difference in the world. It just goes to show you, you're never too young to make a difference. Thanks, Kellen. That was awesome. No problem. I'll see you guys next time. What an incredible day. We had Mishka, who's 12 and is already making a difference in the world. And Timothy made a huge difference, too. Hmm. So I've got a question. Then reveal the question. Ah, how can you make a difference right now? Yeah, think about that. Well, uh, you can use your talent to entertain someone who's feeling bored. Sing someone a song, do a dance, tell a joke. And you can help make peace between people having an argument. Uh, you can solve a complicated problem for someone with a math emergency. And there are so many ways you can make a difference in someone's life or in the world. And you don't have to wait until you're older to do it. I feel like I really need to get on this. Mishka and Timothy have really inspired me. You've made a difference today, John. You've eaten 12 pixie sticks, danced around wrapped in a giant wool blanket, and you've been the head on a baby doll body. That's pretty inspiring, too. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Talk about it together. How can you make a difference right now? And we'll see you guys next time for a brand new So-and-So Show! Bye! Do you think they were listening to me, or were they making a difference right then? The shovel. Oh, yeah. Everyone. Yeah. I like this one. All right, Mishka. Oh, yeah, here we go. You got, you got a new dance? Okay, I got the hula hoop. Oh, oh. The hula hoop. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I've got this one. <laughs> oh, I'm standing still so we can oh, rest. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I love that one. This oh, good. And it's followed up by the checking post. Oh. Oh. 
Oh, that's a good dance. <laughs> I can feel the beat. <laughs>